Hello everyone. I'm Ms. Niveta T, working as Assistant Professor in the Department of Food Technology, Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology. In this lecture, we are going to see about the topic food additives. So food additives are used in different products such as apples, salad dressings, emulsions, creams, jellies and mayonnaises. We can see the difference in the products with and the without food additives. So an apple with the food preservative and without food preservative has the difference in appearance. So without the preservative it will spoil very quickly. Likewise without an emulsifying agent there will be the separation of oil and the liquid phase in a mayonnaise. So this is a general and basic introduction about food additives. So what is an additive? So you can see in a food packaging labeling about the ingredients of food products. So the ingredients used in the food products and the additives are different. A food technologist must be able to differentiate between the food additives and the raw materials used in the foods. So these are some additionally or intentionally added substances to the foods. The general objective of this lecture is to recall the concept of food enhancement and its attributes in further basis of classification of food additives and to distinguish between the functional role of the classified food additives. Objective 1. Recall the concepts of general food enhancement techniques and its attributes. Hence the food additives are the substances which are intentionally added to the food and they are not naturally a part of food which can be added during the processing, production, storage or packaging. The food enhancement technique has been followed through ages for preservation methods. The common preservation methods that has been used in the earlier days are canning, smoking, freezing, pickling, drying etc. These are used to improve the keeping quality of the food products. So what is the effect of industrial revolution on food enhancement? Based on the techniques followed in the earlier ages, after industrial revolution, three major food enhancement techniques came into role. One is the food additives, example addition of enzymes or hydrocolloids to the food products like bakery items or bakery doughs which will improve the texture and appearance of the product. The second one is the physical treatments like microwave, ozone, vacuum and radiation to improve the shelf life of the product. The third one is the packaging methods like use of vacuum packaging or active packaging to preserve foods for longer period of time. Now let's infer the basis of classification of food additives. Additives are classified as intentional or unintentional food additives based on their occurrence. Intentional food additives are those which are deliberately added to the food based on their functional role. They have specific benefits to the food in which they are added. Examples are stabilizers, emulsifiers, preservatives, etc. Unintentional additives are those which are accidentally find their way into the food and may cause health hazard and also spoil the food. Examples of unintentional food additives are pesticides, toxins, heavy metals, etc. Classification based on the source. Natural additives, natural identical additives, artificial or synthetic additives. These are the three classifications based on the source of food additives. Example, tartrazine yellow is a colorant which is added as additive in the food. They are synthetically manufactured and hence they come under the category of artificial or synthetic additives. Beta N is an example of food additive or natural additive because it is derived from the natural plant source such as beetroot. Classification based on the functional role. Food additives have specific functional role in which they are added. For example, colorants improve the color of the product. So, based on their functional role, they are classified as colorants, stabilizers, preservatives and flavors. They are further subclassified as antioxidants and antimicrobials, natural colors and synthetic colors, sweeteners, flavorings and flavor enhancers, 
Sweetness are further classified as nutritive sweetness and non-nutritive sweetness. Let us distinguish between the functional role of the classified food additives. Functions of food additives. When additives are added to food substances, they perform a variety of functions such as improving the taste, texture, consistency and color, keeping the wholesomeness of the food product. They are also added as additional nutrients to make up for the losses exactly for the purpose of fortification. Now let us see the roles of each food additives. Antioxidants. Antioxidants are chemical additives which are added to prevent the oxidative deterioration of any food product. Example, lecithin, ascorbic acid, propofirol. These kind of antioxidants prevent the oxidative deterioration in foods such as ghee, butter, fat spreads. Preservatives. Preservatives are substances which inhibit or arrest the activity of microorganisms. Preservatives are of two classes like class 1 and class 2 preservatives. Class 1 preservatives can be used without any restrictions. That is, they do not have any permissible limits. They can be added as much as quantity as required. Example, salt, sugar, spices and vinegar. Class 2 preservatives are used as per the restrictions and they are used only in certain foods in which they are permitted as per the PFA rules. The presence of any class 2 preservative must be declared on the packaging or the labelings. Example, sulphides, nitrates and nitrites. The next category of food additives are the food colors. These are substances which are used to correct the lost color due to processing. And the use of food colors is restricted to only specific food items. One food color which can be used without any label declaration is the caramel, whereas the other natural colors must be declared in the labeling. Example, beta carotin, chlorophyll, riboflavin, etc. Synthetic food colors which are also permitted for use in India include Poncia forar, erythrosin, tartrazin, sunset yellow, indigo carmine, etc. These food colors are permitted only in certain foods such as ice creams, biscuits, cakes, canned peas, tooth squash. Flavoring agents. The main role of flavoring agent is to improve the taste of the food product and to add variety to the food product. Some flavors are natural flavors and those are exclusively obtained by physical processes from vegetables, sometimes animal raw materials. Natural identical flavors are chemically isolated from raw materials or obtained synthetically. They can be chemically identical to the substances present in natural products. Artificial flavoring substances are those which have not been identified in natural products and are chemically synthesized. One good example for a flavoring agent is monosodium glutamate. But this monosodium glutamate is permitted only in restricted amounts and its addition need to be declared on the label with a warning that the food is unsuitable for children below 12 months of age. Emulsifying and Stabilizing Agents Foods which consist of two different phases that is a liquid phase which is immiscible with each other are called emulsions. To form a uniform emulsion, we need an emulsifying or stabilizing agent. So, stabilizing agents are specifically permitted under production of food adulteration groups. Some commonly used emulsifying or stabilizing agents include agar, alginates, dextrin, sorbitol, pectin, cellulose, monoglycerides or diglycerides or fatty acids. In some food products, modified starches are also used as food emulsifying agents as also thickeners, binders and stabilizers. These are used in products such as sauces to make them thick or potato chips to make them crisp and in puddings to achieve a smooth texture. Sometimes edible gums are also used as thickening agents in jams, gravies and sauces. Gelling agents in puddings and desserts and encapsulating agents also used in stabilizing flavors in the food products. 
Sweetening agents include calorie sweeteners, low calorie sweeteners, and non calorie sweeteners. Calorie sweeteners contribute to up to 4 kilocalorie per gram of the food product. Example of calorie sweeteners are cane sugar. Low calorie sweeteners are relatively less sweet than the sucrose and provide energy between 1 and 3 kilocalorie per gram. Some common examples of low calorie sweeteners are sugar alcohols or polyols. These are naturally manufactured on a commercial scale. Synthetic high intensity sweeteners are more popular that are very sweet so needed to add in very small quantities. Example, saccharin, aspartame, acelfame, potassium. It is usually up to 500 to 600 times sweeter than sugar. Anti-caking agents. Some food products such as powder food products or free-flowing products like salts will stick together due to the presence of moisture in them. In order to avoid that, some food additives called anti-caking agents or substances are added in order to prevent them from becoming wet. Some common anti-caking agents permitted in India include carbonates of calcium, magnesium, phosphates of calcium, magnesium, silicates and stearates. In addition, calcium, potassium or sodium perocyanate may also be used as an anti-caking agent in food products such as salt, iodized salt or iron fortified salt. The next category of food additive is the anti-foaming agents. Foaming during processing, especially during deep fat frying, can cause deteriorative changes to the food quality like formation of browning or unwanted byproducts. To reduce foaming, substances like dimethyl polysiloxane is used in edible oils and fats. This substance is used as an anti-foaming agent in deep fat frying. Enzymes Many food products are harder in texture due to the presence of complex carbohydrates, proteins and lipids. In order to break down these complex compounds into simpler compounds, enzymes are used in food products such as cheese, bread production and meat tenderization. Leavening agents Introduction of gas in batter or dough leading to its expansion will improve the appearance, texture and taste of the foods. Leavening agents such as anhydrous monocalcium phosphate, sodium aluminium phosphate or sulfate are used in food products such as bread where leavening is important for the flavor and texture of the product. This leavening agents will slowly help in releasing the carbon dioxide during baking. So in this entire lecture we have seen about the food additives its definition its classification based on the three different categories like source, intention and prevalence. Here are some stimulating questions to understand the concept of food additives. Carefully note the image 1 and 2. The stimulating questions are Refer image and pick out the effective ingredients which has a role in preventing oxidation. In image 2, why there is a difference in consistency of the mayonnaise in two of the bottles shown. So if you have understood the lecture, you will be able to differentiate and reason for the difference in consistency and find the additive responsible for the same. Thank you.